Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the new Nasty Boys. I'm your co-host this morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you decide to listen to this thing, Billy DeVore, and sitting across from me, as always, is... Hello, it is I, Lee Michael Kimbrell. We're just hanging in there. Dog days of summer, bad boys and girls. I mean, you doing all right? They they're fine. They're fine. They're fine as long as their <laughs> happiness isn't tied up in watching the Reds play baseball. Yeah, because ours isn't anymore. It's rough. It's very hard. It's rough. We are officially yeah. We're almost thirty games under five hundred. We're fifty and seventy-seven. We're so close to the end, man. Fifty and seventy-seven. <laughs> almost done. Almost. I mean, there. we got what a month month of the season left. A little more, yeah. Yeah, goes- fifty and seventy-seven is. 127 games. Yeah, so yeah, about a month. What, yeah. like five weeks? Yeah, because we got a little bit. We bleed in October. Because what, like World Series starts like late late November. Yeah. Which, you know, if you are Major League Baseball, you are very happy that two of the best teams in baseball are Houston yeah. and the Los no Angeles shit, Dodgers. Man. I mean, what do you do if it's the Yankees? It's I have, just New York City in November. It's fucking freezing. <laughs> yeah, this wouldn't be the first time, but yeah, I don't know. Put a tarp over it and get some space heaters. I don't know. That's that's the only thing I could. No shit. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> Try a tarp over yeah. Yankee Stadium. Yeah, no, but just like the idea of with it being pushed back a little bit, which is for what? like Because of the lockout. Oh, duh. Yeah. Yeah, so just like a couple extra weeks. That could wouldn't that be fascinating it if it like really affected the World Series? It, yeah, uh, which I mean, I I I am I am sure if it does end up being Dodgers, Houston, then it's like does this seem a little planned? Yeah, no, does this seem shit. a little forced, huh? Okay, that would be fun to watch. It'd be. Great. I know it's not like the same squads or whatever, but yeah. it's the same fan bases and the, there's still some players that are there. Yeah, that would be awesome. I I would be very excited for a Yankees Houston that LCS. Would be sick. That's good. I mean, it feels like that's where we're on a collision Fairly course. Fairly inevitable. Because yeah, I mean, it's it could it would have to be a wild card team. I know you're hot on the Indians, but I just don't see them taking out the Yankees or the Astros. I don't either. I mean, I could see I could see one team doing it, and I'm wearing their gear after being up yeah, there. Yes. Yeah. I would love to see the Mariners go on a run. I Just get too. to the LCS. That'd be sick. Yeah, man. I mean, they have the tools to make you make make you be able to go deep, which is amazing starting pitching, an excellent bullpen. And the only thing they need is just, you know, and they've they're amazing defensively. They just need more timely hitting. They live or die. It seems like they live or die by the home run, which is also the same problem the Brewers have. Yes. But uh yeah man but they also just need jesse winker to be jesse winker yeah and he has heated up but he needs to be that for this last month slash two months of the season where they thought they need to get the left fielder they thought they were getting right and it just hasn't been that yet Not yet i don't know i think he uh he had a broken heart yeah man moving's hard three time zones no <laughs> oh, the baby no thanks. Yeah, on top of it, you're already succumbing to the fact that you're going to be gone from your family for eight months of the year. Right. And then it's like, oh, well, am I going to live out here? Or Yeah. Yeah, it's tough, man. I feel for him. And that's also why I've been like, you know, I haven't been so hard on him, unlike Mariner's country has been. Because it's like, yeah, man, he's he's a young man who had to go through a lot. He's our boy. He's our guy. And you still see him in downtown Cincinnati, just like pictures yeah, there's that one watch shop downtown that, ha- and there's a suit shop. Yeah, but you also they've had time to change those photos. I know they just don't want to. <laughs> they don't, and I don't blame them. I miss him. Yeah, I miss him every day. I miss the winks. Man. I miss him. Two in the wink, one in the stink. I do. Fancy baseball team name. Two in the. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> Thank you. We had a we had a good weekend. We had a great weekend. Down there at Sawyer Point, telling jokes outside. Yeah, we were uh, down by the river. Went off without a hitch. No rain. Well, I, it was pretty fucking hot. It was hot. On Friday, it was very hot. Saturday, I was like, oh, it's not as bad. And people were like, no, it's worse, actually. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. I, don't, I didn't even notice or think about it. No, but it, it was fun. It was, dude, I think it was just so excited to be there that I did not care. It felt like a swamp. And it all just kind of 
blurred by. I barely remember it. Dude, yeah. yeah I forgot what it was like because I remember just being like, all right, I got to go, go, go get a beer. And then you look at your watch. And, oh, it's been 45 minutes because yeah. I've been stopped by seven people exactly. going to get one beer. Sorry. Exactly. No, it was. It was. That was what was so emotionally draining about it or just draining in general is that. And it was a great thing. Good problems to have. But mm-hmm. um yeah, it's hard. You go and take a piss, and it did. It take thirty. It took thirty minutes. <laughs> right. You'd see a couple comics, then you'd see mm-hmm. some people that wanted to come and see you, or say, "I saw you at Go Bananas," and then it's like you got to talk to them because yep. that feels cool. Yeah. And but yeah, it was it was a doozy, man. I definitely was in a cave for most of the day yesterday. Oh, I was too. I mean, I worked, but I was still just like because I texted you. I was like, "Yeah, man, I'm cool with punting because I'm tired." Yeah. My brain was mush. Cause you see me yawning, I'm still fucking tired. Yeah, dude, we put in shifts. Yes, we were going. We were, I mean, Friday was a shit show. Yeah, I don't even know. Uh, Great. I might have had 20 beers. Easily. (laughs) I was just pounding whiskey sodas. Yeah. And then like shots with people. Where at? At Plum Street. Oh, yeah. And then next thing I know, I'm like, they're like, you're kicking us out? And yeah. I was like, I walk and I'm stumbling. I was like, can I get a ride? And they're like, yeah. And then I turn and Lucas Waterfill is so drunk. He's asleep. No, he was getting up into his, he was going into his van in his wa- wheelchair and he missed and he was tipping over the ramp. Yeah. And I, I did catch that. him. That's terrifying. Very terrifying. Then got him in and I turn around and I was like, my ride left because <laughs> everyone's that fucking drunk. Who was your whip? Who was your ride? Uh, it was Sadie and Spencer. Oh yeah, they were just like they were gonna drop me off. Uh, they were gonna drop me off at home because I'm super. You know, two right seconds. There. Yeah, and so then I eventually got in an Uber with Schubert and the Max. What's his dick from St. Louis? Price. Price. Yes. And then he stayed here, and then we got down to OTR, and Main Street's, like, closed. It looks like a police yes. state with all the lights. And cameras and shit. Dude, it's weird. It's very weird. I'm like, this is 1984, mm-hmm. to a T. Because we wanted to get cheesesteaks, and they were close. So we went to Lucky Dog and ran into Muhammad wearing a shirt two sizes too small. <laughs> then we thought it'd be a good idea to get in the car with him. He looked bad. He looked awful. Yeah. He looked. What did he? He, what he was looked he, terrible. He did not look like a comedian. He looked like a guy who was learning how to DJ. Yeah, no, yeah, he looked. Well, he looked like a guy with brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he looked like a guy with fucking brain damage and mental illness. Yeah. Which, that's what he is. That's what it is. He God, talks he about looked, it. He looked bad. He looked bad. Jesus, he looked bad. Well, we got in the car and went with him to Camp Washington, Chile, at like three oh, o'clock. Yeah. I didn't go to bed till five. I went to bed at four, four to four thirty on both nights. Okay, I went to bed at seven on Saturday seven. night. Seven. Yeah, it was, I was just hanging out. With I was like motor. so excited. Yeah, that's fucking wild. I know. I really put in a shift, dude. I hear this is funny. I think I'm I'm doing this as a bit. I Friday night we Lucas the aforementioned Lucas Waterfill who is in a wheelchair. Yes. Uh, he, we, he didn't want to wake up his like assistant, Monica or whatever, like before the final pickup from Plum Street. Yeah. So me and him and Gabe just like walked slash r- wheelchaired from <laughs> Sawyer Point to Plum Street. Yeah. It's like a half hour walk. Did you guys fine. hop on? Yeah. I mean, we were. Just, yeah, I wish. <laughs> we, I mean, it was fun. We were just talking and smoking and it was good. But the epiphany that I had. Is when you walk through a city downtown with a homeless person or with a with a uh, person in a wheelchair, yeah, the homeless people leave you the fuck alone. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing, dude. All the <laughs> same characters that I know that would come up to me and ask me just directly, they would like look at me and then look at Lucas and then just carry on their fucking merry way. <laughs> it was beautiful. Be gone. It was very nice. That's like awesome. A, it's like a service animal. Dude, it was like a homeless repellent. Yeah, for real, dude. <laughs> like, well, oh, yeah, you feel bad. Oh, you're going to ask him to get in his pockets? Yeah, you're walk- you, you, you just walked up to me with your legs asking for money. <laughs> and you look over and Lucas is just like pretty much laying down yeah. in a wheelchair. <laughs> it was great, man. That's awesome. So yeah. are you saying that you are going to get a wheelchair for downtown? I need one. I need a, okay. a, a an emotional support wheelchair, wheelchair person. <laughs> 
emotional support animal. <laughs> emotional support animal. Well, we're all animals, so it checks out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I like that. But that was good, and uh, yeah, walked with him and Gabe, and yeah, I mean, Plum Street was just a shit show. Dude, it was annihilation, and seeing the stories, I was like, okay. Everyone was very fucked very, up. Top shelf drunk, which, V proud, and it was nice. And then everyone was also toasted a motor. Oh, yeah. It was like... All right. Okay. Buttered up. Buttered up. And everyone's like, man, I feel so rough. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. Do it. And I kept looking at people like, you'll turn a corner. You're doing it right now. Yeah. With with a drink in their hand. Yeah. Like, oh. You're in the middle of doing it. Yeah. I had, I got to motor and I got myself a water. Mm hmm. And then somebody came up to me and was like, hey, do you want a drink? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll just take a high life. And then I got the high life and that I had taken one sip of the water and then I just put that down and now I just had a beer. In my <laughs> like, God damn, that did, that just that was too easy. Yes, it was. That was too easy. Well, I would I would have uh, I, I would basically old style. That's a two gulp beer. Truly. And then had two gulp water and kept doing that. Yeah, throughout well, motor. there you go. That'll keep you safe. That'll keep you safe. Keep you hydrated. But then the 7 a.m. did not help. Shoo we no it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, you just slept right into tomorrow. Yep. And then just chilled on the couch on Saturday. Oh, I on went to the pool. I went to Faust Pool Saturday. That was on fun. Saturday. Or nice. Sunday. Sunday. That was best. That's Sunday, bloody Sunday. Yeah. Whoo. Laying on a fl- on an inflatable flamingo, just sweating, adding to the pool. Dude, I went to bed, like I said, Saturday night, went to bed at like four thirty. Woke up on Sunday. At 4.30. <laughs> just slept into the evening. Yeah. And then you're like, well, well, I guess I'll just be on the couch. I uh, know, man. Yeah. It was rough. Worth it. Oh, completely worth it. That's one of those hangovers where you're just like, yeah, no, I would never, I wouldn't change anything that I did. Yeah. And then it's also just like kind of shows you, we, we, we're, we're some sport drinkers, dude. Oh, dude. Top we shelf demons. Get after it. I mean, I slept until 4.30 on Sunday and then just. Hung out for like an hour and a half and then just went up to the club. And oh. Yeah, went up to the club to watch Dragovich and Donnie Singstack and, mm-hmm. you know, didn't get hammered, but certainly <laughs> had myself four or five. Yeah, nursed it a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, here we are. And Host we made the it. hub, have a couple. Here, yeah, whatever. We don't, we don't got to <laughs> talk about all that. <laughs> I was like, I feel like we're going down a road that we don't want to talk about, which is fine. Uh, I just know one day I think I'll probably kind of have to stop. Sure. So until that day, I'm just I just really enjoy it. Yeah, as you should. I love drinking. I do, too. I think it is one of my favorite things to do. I would have to agree. It's the it's the combination of everything that you want. It's it is it tastes good. Yes, it's friends. Friends. Social, yeah. Exactly. I think that's why I stay up so late. Yeah, well yeah, cuz you just like talking to people. Yeah. It's yeah. Another one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, it's just also like gets you out of your head a little bit, just like mm-hmm. altering that consciousness even if it's just a smidge. Sm- yeah. Sometimes even if it's just a wee little smidgely. You need that release and you just got to, you know, being with folks. I made so <laughs> I was so careful to make sure it didn't make any sound and then I just smacked it across and the it table. It just sounded like a tin top yes. going around. Ring a ling ling. But yeah, uh what and then Sunday I watched Sunday night baseball and I think I freak I don't even remember who played because I was so sweaty and yeah. into, into sleep. But uh yeah. My fantasy baseball playoffs have started. I'm playing friend of the pod Jake in the first round, so I'm in about I'm about to get Smoked. Is his team very good? Yes, it's very good because because of course it is. Yes, and so ah. known entity of the pod, young Jake, young Jake, young sir. Um, so, but I was looking at his roster and I was like, oh man, that guy's pretty awesome. That guy's pretty awesome. Oh, he picked. He must have picked him up late because he's on fire lately. I wonder if there's a place where I could just specifically get that player's T-shirt. And there is a place. Would it be um, in the clutch.com? Oh, in 
theclutch.com, baby. It's a great place. It's a wonderful place. In the clutch.com, all of your MLB PA needs can be met there. Look up your favorite players, snag a shirt, and guess what? Use the promo code Nasty Boys. Nasty Boys with an S. Not a Z. That's right. For 10% off. It's a good deal. Good, great deal. It's a cr- killer deal. Cripplingly great deal. Cripplingly great deal, man. Buy $100 worth of t-shirts, get it for 90 oh, Wow. Come on. What a deal. And also, we're in the eight day and age where it's like people just routinely drop $35, $40, 45 on a t-shirt. Yeah. Not even thinking so about it. So just do it anyway. And uh, you you're, you were going to buy it anyway, but now you get 10% off. I have some exciting in the clutch news. Oh, yeah. The Los Bomberos, which is what the Mariners call their bullpen. Oh. We did a shirt with all of them on it. One of them saw it. Matt uh, Festa saw it. And he said, I want one for the entire bullpen. That's Everybody it. gets one. Has to. So, coming out soon, you'll be able to see the Amer- all the Mariners bullpen wearing it in the clutch shirt. That's fucking dope. Let's, let's go. I love that. So, pretty sweet. And it's like these in the clutch shirts, you can buy a shirt where you'll be the only person in your whole fucking town with that shirt. Yeah. Like, they're very niche. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, you know, it's not as popular as it will be eventually, you know, so it's like you can go at you can go ahead and get you a shirt and be the only guy in town with said shirt. Be on the ground and floor. Isn't that what we want to do is be cool? That's all. Do, do we want to be cool? Come on. That's all we want. That's all we want. We want people to think we're cool. Oh, it's humans. That's no, humans like this cool shirt like that one. Is that stitched? Yeah. Damn, boy. Pretty slick. And you know what's really cool? These sleeves, you can just yank them, and then it becomes a short sleeve, and it comes off. But it's forever, because it's just stitched in. Really? Yeah. That's just like the same with all of my other, like, the other hoodies, Nike hoodies so I got. So those are, like, baseball tee length if you choose. Yeah. So you just yank it, and then it's forever torn. Yes. That's pretty fun. It's really fun. That's a fun little gimmick to throw on your shirt so when you see like david bell out there with a red hoodie on and it's missing its sleeves it's because he just tore them off he just tore them off what an interesting take how cool on a damn shirt very cool nike that is is pretty fucking sick yeah well i'm glad that we i'm glad that we had uh plenty of comedy to do this last weekend yeah because and most of the week, I was gone Wednesday, Thursday, and then came back, and then Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday was just a drain, yeah. and then Monday, hub, and now here we are on a Tuesday. But yeah, you were in the, Chattanooga or Charlotte. You were in Charlotte. Charlotte, Char- Charlotte on Wednesday at the Charlotte Comedy Zone, which rips. It was great, and then Columbus on Thursday, very fun. But it was just so much driving. I did the math. When I got to the Columbus, or after the show at the Columbus Funny Bone, it had been 36 hours since I had left Cincinnati to go to Charlotte, and I had been in the car for 17 of them. Oh, my God. And then asleep for, like, 10 of them. So I I went, like, two days where pretty much my only waking hours were at the club, like, at a comedy club, doing jokes. Amazing. And, yeah, it was great. It went really well. It was fun. Um, but what I was getting at is that the Reds have not been playing well. <laughs> that was a roundabout way to get there. Yeah, I was just saying thank God for comedy because if we just sit had to sit there and watch every Reds game. It would be brutal. I mean, no Green, no Ashcraft. Nope. No Joey. No Tyler. No Tyler. Indy is kind of a shell. I mean, he's still just kind of figuring it out, coming back from the IL. He never really caught a rhythm this season. No, then he got hurt. Like, he had a, a little, little hurt again. Yeah, he was hurt on Friday. I, I mean, mean, we just went and got fucking molly whopped on the road in Philadelphia. <laughs> it was, yeah. I mean, they're vying. They're they're basically in the playoffs. So they're like, all right, they're doing what they're supposed to do, which is take care of bad teams. Actually, bud. Is, Bar- is Bryce Harper back? Bryce Harper is back. Good. And he had a very good start. Good. I'm, I want him to be back. And I, I want him to be good. Yeah, me too. Me too. For sure. I remember when he was on the Sports Illustrated cover when he was 15. Yeah, hitting hitting dingers at uh, where the twins used to play, 
you know, their right field was just like all bleachers, that wall of bleachers. Mm -hmm. I just have this vivid memory of like very early YouTube watching Bryce Harper hit like 600 foot home runs with a, a DeMarini Venom. Yeah. Or no, the Vexum. When he was 16. Yeah. Uh, India, since Monday, he only missed... Whoa. Like like eight days, like last Monday? Mm-hmm. He's 333, 385, 458, mm. 131 weighted runs created plus. That's a great week. Yep, eight hits and 26 appearances. That's five a great runs, week, Johnny. Groups. Yeah, there you go. So how about that? Not mad at that. Good on him. Not mad at all. I um, mean, what do you see as bright spots? That is a bright spot. That's the a bright that spot. Jonathan India put together a good week. Yeah, and that's the only way. That's the way. That's how we've been looking at it all year is week to week. Yes. And then when you put those samples together and you look at an entire month, then you're like, hell yeah, that's the that's the way to look at it. If you look at the entire month, not electric, you know, two forty four, three three eleven, three fifty four, average, a little bit of, like close to close to average. So. But then you reduce that sample size, and you have a good week. Yeah. It's the only way to look at it, because they're just buying time. We, I mean, we are just <laughs> trying to get to 162 at this point, huh? Yeah, it's pretty obvious. How much money do you think David Bell would pay out of his paycheck <laughs> if we could just end the fucking season no and get into the off season? No shit, because they're not going to bring anybody up that they're excited about. They need to bring Steer up. I mean, he yeah. should be playing first or farmer at first and you put steer third or wherever he needs to be up here is the Dela cruz thing just based on that control correct i mean there's no reason yeah they're, i mean they're they're not going to start the clock yeah. the, and then, what do you think that's really going to bring people in for the rest of the year no uh, we thought it would but now it's more of no just but like, not at this point it would it no. would it would there would be a bump you wouldn't be able to like tell watching the tv no. you know it wouldn't bring out like ten thousand reds fans no, because the people that are super stoked about um, Ellie, they're already at the games. You know, yeah, they're most, they're there. There are yeah, they're mostly are at the games. They're either they're excited for Ellie De La Cruz or they're there because of work. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, no shit. <laughs> they're there for free because of their job. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, it, it's a bummer. I would love to see Ellie up here this year, but I get I get the business end of it. No, well, well you were we were talking about Bryce, and so then I brought up India's last week. With Bryce, man, there was an awesome video about. Did you? Did I send that to you? You sent it to me about like saw on YouTube about like why people hate Bryce Harper and there shouldn't be a reason. Like it's just that the media has been extremely critical on him. And starting off with his career, it was when people were real sticklers about like the unwritten rules. Yeah, and he and was just like a brash kind of he's badass kid. Yeah, and now like if it wasn't for Bryce, a lot of this act like a lot of these this stuff wouldn't be accepted. What like the bat flipping and just like yeah. all the cool aspects of the game. Yeah, it's a, good, it's a great point. A lot of flair, you know that type of stuff. So I mean, yeah. So I've come I've come more around on him and knowing like oh yeah maybe I was just influenced by what everybody else was saying in old school baseball instead of really looking and seeing what he was doing and sure. noticing that it was important yeah, and for fun because sure. yes. baseball's fun. It was. Bryce Harper, great for the game. Flashy cleats. Period, paragraph, great for the game. Flashy cleats, incredible haircut, <laughs> yeah. handsome guy, I don't know, just generally cool. Yeah. You know, just kind of a badass dude. He's the coolest Mormon ever. Yeah, that's astounding <laughs> that he's an LDS guy. I always forget that. Yeah. Never forget. I mean, he can't really give up that much of a fuck, right? Or is he? I, know, I wouldn't think so. No, probably not. Probably not. But no. Mormons are rich, huh? Oh, yeah, dude. They're all about. So, like, did you watch? There's a doc on Netflix about Mormon. Like the. Oh, like the Keep Sweet or whatever. The big dude or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Zavon or like the tall guy. I know who you're talking about. The guy who started, like, had a thing in the, sick, it in was the like, like, 80s, 90s. Be nice and keep sweet or something. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That shit is haunting. So, it's. So, what they do is they control the local economy. And then that's why they're they're rich. And then they're just putting more workers into the workforce. That they control. Goddamn morms, dude. And the church is like, hey, you got to give us your business, dude. We control it. You don't want to be swayed by evil and temptation. Thuggery. No shit. Top shelf thuggery cultism that is truly a dictatorship. 
being controlled by, you know, this shit's being led by, man. you know, with the teachings of Joseph Smith. Who was just a horny 14-year-old boy trying to get pussy. And he got and it. And he just made up some <laughs> shit <laughs> trying to get pussy. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus was in Missouri. Okay. And then everyone's like, yeah, sure. Whatever. We'll buy it. Whatever. Smart guy. Smart. He saw beyond the cum. Yes. Beyond, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he would, He always had post-nut clarity. <laughs> It was always there. Always there. Old Joey Smith. This is the only baseball podcast where we go from talking about Bryce Harper to Mormonism and In how they one fell swoop. And how evil it is. Yes. Only one. Oh, yeah. Mark it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you're right, man. Like, I mean, the games were at least competitive. Six, seven, five, seven. The Monday game was not competitive. A little out of hand. One four, but six seven five seven zero four. I mean, and Lodolo ha- had a good start the first four innings, and then just they figured him. Yeah, out. one time through the lineup, one and a half times, times through the lineup. And he went five and a third, three hits, four earned runs, two walks, five Ks though. So he had four Ks to start. That's not a complete utter fall apart but it wasn't a good start no for a guy who who's only had what at this point 16 starts yeah yeah pick what four of them five of them maybe have been quality yeah he's no he's no graham ashcraft but yeah because he's playing (laughs) i know what you mean yeah yeah he's had he started 13 games Nick has. That's it. Isn't that crazy to think about? It's like, and he's, you know, the it's all there. The tools are there. He's, we've seen it and we're like, we know he's we can great. do it. We're psyched. I'm, I'm we're high. Psyched. I'm very high on Lodolo. We're very excited. Yeah. But this week, not great. Uh, even against Washington, man, he went, well, actually against Washington, he was great. I take that back. I forgot. He went seven innings, five hits, three earned runs, one walk. One homer, five Ks. Boom. There he is. Okay. I know we're just kind of hopping around. And again, not to be a Debbie Downer, but... It's all that the, that's all that's left. Dude, Jose <laughs> Barrer, no. I didn't even pull up his numbers. They're bad. I know that they're bad. They're real bad. I know they're bad. He's been, Since that game where he was, he hit two home runs... His batting average is under a hundred. Oh my God! On the year, buck sixty, one eighty one on base, two forty seven slugging. You want to hear something even more ridiculous? Forty nine point four percent Ks. That's raised from last week. Yes. Last week it was forty eight percent something. Forty eight point something. Something. Yes. He's striking out half of the time. That's less than fucking the Punisher. Yep. Boy, howdy. You just you just leave him there for the rest of the year, but at this point, at the end of the year, you have to assess. But what if at the end, yeah, what if at the end of the year his season average is like 105? What if he just struggle buses it for the next 5 weeks? Like are you, is are you, are you doing him a disservice or or what? Because, you know, we talked about it at length the last podcast just like the process of player development and the game of baseball and how it takes a long time and how you know you're looking at these sample sizes and sometimes it goes from month to month and you're looking for a guy to tie it all together and that might take a long time sure we were talking about in the context of Nick Senzel but I mean it's a zero pressure situation you know we're 30 games under 500 and it's not a zero pressure for him because he looks down in the majors and it, you got Ellie and you got all these guys and, yeah. and Marte and it's it's nasty down there. That's literally what I was about to say. You yeah. know, it's nasty down there. And I mean, we've posited that before. It's like, is it getting in his head? It better be getting in his head because the other option is he can't hit. He can't hit a slider, period. Yeah. And he can't I'd rather see. Him be worried about all the heat that we got down in AAA or what, and this is how it's manifesting versus he mechanically isn't a big league pitcher. Yeah. Or, or not pitcher, but player. You right, know what I'm right. saying? And then he just cannot see, he just can't see a Anything slider. Anything moving. Right. He can get a straight fastball, but like, Which, you give, me a, give me a week on a jugs machine throwing 100 and I can just time out a straight fastball. <laughs> right. 
But what's weird is in AAA, it's all sliders. Like everybody yeah, is just, everyone's just working on that pitch. Right. And so like, maybe he wasn't ready to come up. And David Bell was like, well, we're, you know, he's got to come up. He's ready. I'm like, well, this is, I understand that like what you said with them being under, with all the other studs underneath him, yeah. that he might be feeling it down his neck or whatever. And that, that the front office decided shit or get off the pot. We got to figure out these yeah. other dudes. Yes. And maybe he did need another month in AAA. Maybe he does need a full, actual full year because he did not have one this year with that hand injury. Yeah. No, I, mean, I mean, he didn't even have half a season, really. Yeah. I mean, how many games will he end up playing this year? Just about half? Um, like 65 to 80? Dude, he's only played 23 games so far. Oh, see, that's crazy. He only has 83 plate appearances. That's astounding. So. so 83 appearances and he has struck out. 41 times. <laughs> yeah. His, oh God, he has a negative 0.8 war. That's gross. Anyway. Yikes. Uh, yeah, man. His um, war is below zero? Correct. What but does it, that even mean? Again, that means he, you any you could put anyone else anyone in. Anyone else in and you'd have a better <laughs> chance at winning? Maybe. You maybe win a game. But man, like, dude, again, 20 three games this season i mean that's just like you there's so much time he's 24 he'll be 25 next year yeah there's a ton of time still left but the time is just inherently shorter with what else we got in. but here's the other thing man we also know what next year's going to be they're not going to fucking sign anybody. They're going to s- continue to see if these guys can f- can t- figure it out. We'll just have a quadruple A baseball team. Yeah, man. That's yeah. just what it's going to be until 2024. So you might as well let him figure it out. He's got two more options, too. So say he, we go into spring training, okay? And he's still not looking great. He can be on the 40-man and go to triple A. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. And say, you know, you have Farmer again next year, or you have, or Matt McClain looks great in spring training. Yeah. You put him in, you put him up there. Donovan was just a one year. I do think so. I, I'm going to look it up. I think it was like, I, it is a one year. One year, four, six or something. Yeah. Here. It's like one year, 4.6, 4.5. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Just a one year, 4.5. I'll be interested. I don't. The Reds won't bring him back. No, because he'll be demanding six and he six and, and a half. And seven. he will call for that. He'll get it after from some season he's had. Well, maybe he is thirty four. He turns thirty five at the end of this year. But some team will give. His, he'll he'll go be a Blue Jay and like back up <laughs> Simeon or something. Sure, you know. Yeah, someone will pay him to just go be solid as a rock. Which is what he's been all fucking yeah, year. Sure. The metrics carry. It's not like he's hitting dingers. He the metrics carry where he's just going to continue to do this just until the, the wheels. Ball up, hit line drives. Yeah, you know. Speaking of when we're looking and like making, trying to figure out things and trying to make the most of the rest of the year, TJ Friel is doing that. Yeah, he is. Spoke too soon last week when I shit on him uh, and brought up like, hey, he's not you know being what we want him to be. Um, so TJ. This week, again, like always, small sample size, but, dude, 381, 440, 952. Power. Power. He has two homers, two triples, two doubles. He's eight for 25 of the plate, eight ribs, 16% K rate. I mean, 254 weighted runs created plus. And if you look for the entire month, dude, like, you know, he's, uh, let's take a look here. Since... August 16, 378, and 43 plate appearances, 14 hits. 373, 442, 784. Not enough of a crazy enough, not enough of a sample size to really decide on what you're saying for the future, but... No, but if our future is just like platooning an entire Major League yeah. season next year, <laughs> then you got to have room for TJ. Mm-hmm. You know? He turns 28 next year. TJ and Trey Lee and... The legend of Max Schrock. And Speaking of Max Schrock, did I tell you this? I don't no. think I told you this. 
So Friday, Garrett Teitelbaum, yeah. friend of the pod, uh, every Friday we go to lunch together. We go around noon, noon to one. Um, we were bouncing around, but now we have decided just we're going to go to Carl's Deli. It's just the it's best. It's so good. It's the best. God, I love Carl's Deli. Carl's Deli's incredible. We're sitting outside. there last week. Eating a sandwich. And I look up and I see a guy pushing a stroller. And I was like, I think that's Max Schrock. And then he comes, gets closer, and I'm like, that's definitely Max Schrock, his wife, and his baby. Yeah. And uh, they go inside, and I look at Garrett, and I go, dude, that was that's Max, the Schrock. Of Max Schrock. And he's like, when well, are you going to go say something? Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not going to say anything. I was just, that's Max Schrock. He's like, okay. Five minutes later, I look up, and I see a guy in slide sweatpants tank top with a real couple real bad like tattoos and it was alomar jr oh really and he walked in and he's like garrett's like now you definitely gotta say something i was like knock what am i gonna go up and say to him hey were you this guy rosa with me yeah <laughs> no yeah so yeah i saw them at carl so they have knocked him up said go reds good luck with whoever you play for next year then the reds cut max schrock Someone said, I'm going to miss Max Schrock next year. Yeah. The Reds uh, designated him for assignment yesterday. 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 So he, I saw him get a sandwich and was a professional baseball player. One of his last sandwiches as a, bi- as a big leaguer. As a Red. Yeah, they selected Chase Anderson and designated the legend of Max Schrock to create room on the 40-man. Poor Max. God, I love that guy. Just shows you how hard it is to just couldn't stay healthy. No, to have a major league career. Oh, it's like he yeah. was good. He was good. He had a, he could play everywhere. The guy could hit. He just could never stay yeah, healthy. Which is bones. same thing they did. Same thing that happened to him in St. Louis. It's just such a bummer. I didn't a realize real... he was an ex Cardinal. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, is. And Al Mora's hurt again, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He's on the IL. Yeah. What did he have again? I totally forget. Yeah, he's on the 10 day. But I forget what it's for. Probably like ham. It was like a hammy or a quad or something. Just he tweaked a banjo. <laughs> tweaked a banjo. I had never heard of that one. Count it in. Oh. Pop the banjo string. But yeah, TJ Friel. I mean, like, you like to see that too. Good to see. Hell yeah. I mean, obviously, padding the stats against the Nats helps, but still, real good to see. Um, and the other one that's good to see, Stuart Fairchild. In 17 plate appearances, he's got four hits and three home runs. Hit him a dinger. Hit him a ding-ding. Hit, hit Times him three. Three in a week. Yeah. And that was when you went Fairchild, Friel. Chucky Robinson. And Chucky in, Robinson. In the fifth inning, baby. Yesterday. I love a lifetime minor league player, dude. Get it. Bring, leave him up here, too. Out, Romine hasn't worked out. We don't have any catchers. <laughs> yeah. No one on our team's a catcher. No. What are you going to do? Move Farmer back there again? We could. But, I mean, who gives a fuck who's back there catching for us? <laughs> right. We've played more people on our team. There have been more players on our team than... Any team in Major League history this year. 59. Yeah. Now, 59. Oy vey. It's wild. It's wild. I don't know what's more wild. 59 players are Tom Browning's DUI. Boy, he went for it, huh? He truly did. You know, we've all been behind the wheel when maybe we shouldn't be, but... Sure, but we... But he hit a pole, Uh a tree... And then ran into a house. <laughs> yeah, and then kept saying, I don't know where I am. He was completely lost. Gone. They said He told the cops that he was going to his house <laughs> and that he put his house's uh, address into the GPS six hours before he crashed his car. <laughs> So, I mean, he was just joyriding, dude. He had no they clue. They found a bowl in his pocket. He was just driving around smoking weed. I just think he did. I truly think he had no idea where he was going. Yeah. he. I mean, the mugshot, I, I didn't realize, and he's not, but he might be. He looks old as fuck. Tom Browning. He looks bad. Um, so, I mean, he played for the Reds from 84 to 94. So, if you assume if he was 25 and then played until 36 in 1996... 
he is 62 years old. Yeah, boy, that is that mugshot, man. That I I know that my dad is in particularly good health, but my benchmark is like Mike's about to turn 67. That is like my idea of that's like my frame of reference for how old someone's lo- looks. Yeah. Because my pops is almost 70 years old. He looks great. He looks fucking amazing. Yeah, he looks like late so, 50s. So when I see a guy in like his early 60s who who looks significantly <laughs> older than my dad, yeah, I'm, I'm like, God damn, Tom Browning. <laughs> it was rough, dude. He dude. looked bad. He's like bald. He's got the little... Costanza and the white goatee and yeah and the body cam footage isn't doing him any favors yeah, he's like I don't know where I am I have no clue so think about it he was at an, at an event held, hosted by Bootsy Collins yeah okay had two bourbons smoked something with Bootsy that was probably wild yeah <laughs> yeah right absolutely crazy yes very good point got in the car and then was in Brown County do you know how far Dude, out of like the way 45 minutes out of his way out of the way just gone he could have gotten an Uber in Hamilton but at the same time he's like I'm oh, Mr. Perfect I, I got it only perfect game in Red's history exactly curled it against the Dodgers the doll hairs. The uh, doll hairs. Yeah, yeah, the doll hairs. Doll hairs in '88. He was yeah. an All Star in '91, World Series champion in 1990, and now ran into a house. Yeah, drove into a house. Drove into. Thank God, no, no one was one's hurt. hurt. Yeah, no one was that hurt. That would be horrific if, like, you know, we wouldn't be talking about it if someone got it hurt. It would not be in jest if he, if it was uh, vehicular homie. But since no one got hurt. It's hilarious. Yeah, oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. And apparently the people who lived in the house were out in their front yard just like chilling. And then yeah. just Tom Browning. And it's not Tap. like he went in there and like crushed the shit. I, I think it's even funnier. He like slowly drove into a house. <laughs> you know, he like hit a pole, hit a tree. He's like, oh, fuck. Trying to correct and you're just kind of like, boop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think this is it. And they God said that the only man. person in the house was just a kid playing video games. Gaming it up. So he didn't hear shit. He had his earbuds in. Yeah, he was screaming at kids in Japan. Yeah, playing Fortnite, building bridges and shooting shit. Fork knife. For- <laughs> My favorite dinner-based game. Fork knife. Oh, come on. You going to tweet that? Yeah, it's not bad. I could. You could. Fork <laughs> knife. I mean, it's perfect for Twitter. Mm-hmm. It's short, stupid. I'm in it. Short, stupid. No one should like it. Everyone will love it. Everyone, yeah, that is Twitter. That's how it goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, the fact that no one got hurt and everything is is fun is is great. The funniest thing was uh, Pat sent it to me, and I was look. He was like, "Did you see the comment on Local Twelve on their story? There's a thread on Facebook. Co- people commenting there, and they tag like, hey, at so and so, is this the guy who crashed into your house?' <laughs> and then reply underneath, "Yes, <laughs> just simple." Yes, this is this is the guy. That's the one. That's the one. And knowing in Brown County, they're going to talk about this forever. That's a big deal. They're going to build a plaque by that house. This is this is the house that Tom Browning that Mr. ran into. Perfect drove his car <laughs> into while he was just going on a dip. They should in uh, they should probably induct that truck into the Reds Hall of Fame. Put it something on there, dude. <laughs> Give the man. Yeah, it's the new Tundra. Yeah, <laughs> it's Tom Browning. Hit. hit. <laughs> Hit Tom Browning's Dewey truck. Dewey truck with party plates. Yeah, yeah, dude. That's so funny. Dude, that's... that's the party plates. With party plates. That is hilarious. So the Reds have coming up. Um, they've got... Do, do, do. The rest of the week, they have the Cardinals. Pujols hit 694. Pujols' last game's on Wednesday. Cardinals... In a Red... At Great American Great Ballpark. Great American. Uh, they're here tonight and tomorrow. Correct. I think I might go Wednesday because it is Pujols' last game at Great America. I would like to see Pujols live. Me too. Just one last time. I would like to see him hit another dinger. Yeah, me or two. too. I mean that that's pretty cool. I saw some crazy stat where it was like 23 years ago or something. Pujols hit a home run. Serena Williams won the U.S. Open. And then Biggio, Bichette. And Guerrero Senior all had base hits. Yeah. And then yesterday, Pujols hit a home run. Serena Williams in the U.S. Open, and then Bichette, Biggio, and Guerrero Junior all had base hits. 
And it's like, yeah, God. You know, Sports are weird. Yeah. 21 years had passed. 21 years. Drinking yeah, it. Yeah, dude. Albert, man. Fucking respect. Yeah, of course. Just just nothing but respect for the man. The Same. Terminator, dude. The machine. Yeah, dude. He was a machine. He, I completely emulated how I hit after him when I was a kid. Just the squat and the With turn? The, just the squat and the turn, and it was more the selection, where it was just like people would get... It's like, uh, you know, he was obviously a cerebral hitter. Smart guy as far as approach and everything, but it's <laughs> like... Whereas Joey is like a, you know, a scalpel wielding surgeon. Yeah. When Albert was at his prime, he just hit, he just swung at the first ball he liked. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, he probably took, he probably had two or three pitches thrown at him per at bat, if that. Yeah. He was just king of the first fastball he saw, barrel. And think about it. Like, if it was inside, he would turn on it. Yes. If it was high, he would turn on it, or he would just push it in the center. Yeah. If it was outside, he would put it into right field. Fully go the other way. Yeah. And if it was so low. So good at hitting. I mean. And if it was low, he wouldn't even, he would just wouldn't even bother. We just forget. And I know the game has evolved, but it's like, dude, we saw guys win batting champs with like 370 averages. <laughs> yeah. I wonder. Like, Pujols would go like 345. 45 dingers, 120 ribs, and not win the MVP. I know. And it's it's crazy to think he is... Well, he's a three-time MVP. Oh, that, that was the question last night at the ballpark. Um, think about this. His... Oh, my God. He didn't even win MVP in 2003. But listen to the slash line. 359, 439, 667 in 03. He went three, four, six. Yeah. And who guess who won it that year? In 03? Mm-hmm. Barry Bonds? Yeah, of course. 341, 529, 741. 529 on base? Yeah. That's dis- That's just disgusting. That's so. Ridiculous. Imagine how many times he got walked. It was bananas. That was his best year batting average wise. So he hit. Th- he hit three fifty nine with forty. Hold on, sorry, I dropped down forty three homers and one hundred and twenty four RBIs. <laughs> you don't see that anymore. No, it does. Uh, it's not a. Doesn't thing. exist. No, it's not a thing. Is that because pitching is just elevated, or like yeah, yeah it's just because pitching is so different. Pitching's elevated. I mean. No, you know, you would see there was like three people who threw 100 and one of them was Eric Gagne. Yeah, for real. And they were all just closers. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. Because you go back and you'll like watch some of these. uh, Just watch some highlights from the early 2000s, late 90s. Yeah. And every pitcher is just like built like Heathcliff Slocum. (laughs) <laughs> just a big ass bald white guy in a goatee mm-hmm. he's like six five two yeah. f- fifty kind of like shaped like a bowling pin <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, and he yeah just shoved and they threw gas but it was like 96 Six. yeah at best yeah at best truly dude looking at his baseball reference it's so silly i mean when he won back-to-back mvps dude in 08, 357, 462, 653, with an OPS plus of 192, which was the highest in his career. 37 homers, 116 ribs. That's fucking insane. I know. Did it for average and power and all of it. And then it just dis- it didn't disappear, but it wasn't like... And not strike out. Yeah. He didn't strike out a lot. No. God, even his 2019, like people were like dogging him, but he still had 23 homers and 93 ribs. With an OPS plus of in twenty nineteen, he had ninety three ribs. Yeah, he's got the dog in him, man. He's got the dog, and they say what? Then so that's when he was. They say he was thirty nine. We know he's got to be way older. Do we the think same, so? Same thing. Yeah, same thing with like Ortiz and all these dudes. Like Jake and I were talking about. Like, there's no way that he is only what that he's only Who, Nelson, forty. That Nelson he's only, Cruz or only Albert forty two. Just all of them. Not all of them, but like a few where you're like, okay. Yeah. You, you look at pools and you're like, 42? No, nah, he's got to be like 45. Interesting. <coughs> where did he come from again? DR? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, which it's, it makes it even more impressive. Oh, yeah. The fact that 
what, in 2019, say he is currently 45, then at 42, he went 23 and 94? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's hitting, like, since the beginning, like, August 8th, he's batting, like, something ridiculous, 431. So I picked him up, and I was like, let's ride this train. Let's see what happens here. But it's crazy, man. And then the Reds finish out uh, their homestand against the Rockies for three, so it's the have-nots versus the have-nots. And then next week, uh, three at sh- three at the Cubbies. You can catch me on the Ron Santo podcast at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. Bada bang. With old Mr. Rocket talking about uh, how both of these teams suck. Very bad. Very bad. It's about all there is to it. That's about where it Not is. Not good. Let's talk about good teams. There's plenty of them. There's plenty of them. And the, there, are, there are fans out there who are gearing up for the playoffs. There are. It's very odd, and so we're going to start talking about it for a little bit. Uh, in the AL, you've got the Yankees lead is down to seven games. Um, your Cleveland Guardians are up at this moment, which is 7.02 p.m., okay, on a Tuesday. Guardians are up up a game and a half on the twins and the white Sox are five back i'm declaring them dead the Sox? yeah yeah they're not that good they aren't good no they've just looked bad Ooh, it's great la is so gone after he, the end of the season uh did you see what the fans did no the fans said they carry they held a sign up that just said sell the team really to reinsdorf yeah good wouldn't i mean if you're in that fan base and you your GM makes all the right moves, locks up this young talent for a long time, and then you you make the playoffs. You fire your manager just so you can bring back Tony La Russa because you were wrong 30 years ago. It was stupid. It was very dumb. Who'd they fire? He was good, too. Um, I can't remember. Yeah, but he, like... Was a holdover. He was like moved up with the basically. Yeah, with them. yeah, with the squad. Right, this like a Snitker situation. Yes. So, uh, but they're they're toast. It sucks because I was. We were both hyped. We they were our pick for the AL Central. Yeah. We were just like, yeah, they're gonna run away with it. You would assume. I mean, on paper, they were the far superior team in that division. Yeah, and now it's like, now it's like, oh. The Guardians, I can see them starting to pull away from Minnesota. Oh, yeah. I realistically can see that. Um, and your AL wild card at this moment, Tampa's up one. Uh, Seattle's up a half game, and Toronto is in. Baltimore's two back. Minnesota's three back. Um, and I just don't see the Twins catching the Guardians. No. With that starting rotation that the Guardians have with their bullpen, did a little did a little digging for you, bud. Yeah. Did you know that the Guardians have the fourth best bullpen in baseball? Really? Wouldn't have guessed it. Wouldn't have either. What are the top three? Your top three: Houston, Yankees, Dodgers. You know the th- the three, three best the three best teams. Uh, and then Cleveland. Guess who's right behind them? Baltimore. That makes sense. It makes sense for when a team is, uh, you know, outperforming what every single baseball expert thought that they would do. Yeah. They've got to have, you know, a couple facets of that team have got to be going out of their mind. Oh, yeah. And that, that is one of them with uh, Cleveland. Red also- Sox just nowhere to be found. <laughs> uh, for saves, Cleveland's in the middle of the pack. Holds Cleveland's near the bottom of the list, which is interesting. But Whip, oh no, hold on, no, I've got it in reverse order. Whip, third best in baseball, man. And then saves, yeah, they're middle of the pack. I had it, I had it situated properly. Yeah, man, bonkers, absolute bonkers. Bonk. Bunkers. So yeah, that's also why I have more faith in the Guardians than I do the Twins. And considering the Twins starting pitching, Malley's been out. <coughs> um, Sonny's been out, inconsistent as well. Yeah. And you're telling me that you think uh, the Twins can pull it off with Dylan Bundy? Definitely not. No. No way. But that's also why I think Baltimore's pesky in there too. Yeah. So they'll be. And I mean, God, what a just a fun story. 
Yeah, man. The Orioles, they lost, what, 100 games for like three or four years in a row? <laughs> yeah. I mean, truly the worst team in the league, and it wasn't even close. And then sold at the deadline yeah. and somehow made their team better. Speaking of the selling on the deadline, I know we are probably about to kick it over to the NL. Yeah. But Josh Hader blowing it. That was what I was going to get at. That blowing is Blowing it. There is two things on here yeah. that we will get to. Yeah. So we'll start, we'll just pop on over, but I'm very, I, I, I think the team that's most likely going to lose their spot in the AL wild card is Toronto. Tampa's going to get more healthy, and I see them in Seattle. They're also just winners. It's just yeah. a pro, proven winning franchise. Yeah, just it's scrap and figure it out. Done. Yeah, so it'll be fun to watch down the stretch. Um, NL, dude, the Mets are up three. Over the Dod, over Jesus, Mets are up three over the Braves, which is also crazy that they are still just neck and half, neck and neck. Phillies ten games back. Um, your card, the Cardinals are six games up now on Milwaukee. Yeah, that and I think that gap's just going to get more and more. Are you too? And then here's where we get into it. Your wild card, Atlanta's up eight and a half. Phillies up one and a half. And then you've got the Padres, and then you have Milwaukee one and a half back of that last spot dude Padres again I feel like we are just this is going to be the topic of discussion the rest of the season and keeping our eyes on it Josh Hader since joining the Padres seven games pitched 12 earned runs 8 K's 23.14 ERA yeah it's bad he's getting absolutely shelled shelled dude he doesn't even look like himself no, anymore. not at all. That slider is just hanging over yeah, the middle of the plate. Dude, that's crazy. Just getting murdered. He's never been this bad. No. Ever. He's pretty much always been elite. And now this is the first time where he's like, oh, I have to make an adjustment. Yeah. And he's doing it in a new city with a new staff. New all the while thinking, trying to imagine what big fat contract he was going to get next season. So then that makes you press. You know? Yeah. Damn, dude. On a team that's like, we're trying to contend for a World Series. Yeah. And then you're just giving games away. You're like, uh, whoops. And we traded. Yeah. That's so crazy. They yeah. traded away a guy who had the most saves in baseball. I know. It just doesn't make sense. It was a weird one. It doesn't make sense. Now it makes me think, are the Brewers better off without him? Maybe. I mean, I didn't like... I didn't know about it until you were bringing it up, but like if he was just going to hold him hostage and, you know, he was already kind of a bit of a diva and he would throw 1.0 innings and that's it. Not an out above, not an out less. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Fucking good luck. Yeah. And you already have Devin Williams, who's a beast. Yeah. So it is working out for the Brewers. Exciting game last night. Um, but man, I. <sighs> Dude, I just have this gut feeling that Milwaukee's going to go on a run and they're going to knock out the Padres. I would love it. Now, let's take a look at their their schedule here. Just just out of curiosity uh, to see what they have left. Because if they have more against like the Dodgers coming up or, I mean, who has a tougher strength of schedule? Padres remaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, I mean, shit, the Brewers probably have an easier remaining schedule if they have to play the rest of the NL Central. Yeah, I was about to say, they got to play us, the Cubs, and Pittsburgh. So, two more at the Giants. Dude, Padres beat up on Rod Rodon last night. Okay. Oh, buddy boy. Yeah. I don't, I don't have a good feeling. Three at the Dodgers to start September. Then you've got three at Arizona. Okay, cool. Or three at home against Arizona, and then three at home against the Dodgers, two at Seattle, four at Arizona, three versus the Cardinals at home. Yeah, minus Arizona, none of these, these are all difficult draws. At the Rockies, and then to close out the month, three at home against the Dodgers. Damn, so they have nine <laughs> games against the Dodgers left? Yeah, and then three against the White Sox at home, and then they close out at home with three against the Giants. That is not an easy sketch. No, it's not. 
and you need Josh Bell to get going, Drury's been great since he's been there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, I don't know if they're going to be able to hold him off. I want it to be the Brew Crew. I do too. We have we have vetted interests and in why. Yes. For the boy, but on top of that, like they were supposed to be there this whole year. You know, the Milwaukee was supposed to just take this division and run with it. Everyone's like, it all checks out. It makes sense. And then every, we started playing the games. And guess what? But we were, we we both everyone kind of called it. You didn't want to come out and say it, but the fact that the Cardinals are you know twenty plus games over five hundred isn't shocking anybody. No. We, I think we all under evaluated them this year. Yeah, I really do, and we. I think it's it, right now. It is that the best has happened for the Cardinals, which is Goldschmidt MVP fucking yes. season, Arenado. Um, same deal. Same deal, and then every other piece is working. And then all the young guns that they brought up are just Edmund, beasts. And Edmonds having a great year, so. September, what it looks like for your Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, four at Arizona, three at Colorado, a double deucer against the Giants at home. This is already a million times easier than what the Padres have left. Oh, dude, it is way easier. You ready? Arizona, Colorado. Us at Milwaukee, at the Cardinals. They've got the Yankees at home. For three of oh, the Cardinals, the two is it's a two spot at the Cardinals. Uh, Mets, you've got three at home against the Mets, four at Great American Ballpark, two at home against the Cardinals, two at home against the Marlins, and then to finish out the season, yeah, you've got three against the Marlins and then three against the Diamondbacks. Unless the Brew Crew collapse completely collapse. A full... Which yeah. is what they've been doing all year. Yes. I'm going to put my money on the Brew Crew making the playoffs. Over San Diego. Yeah. I would love it. God, that would be sick. And it sucks because the Padres did do did exactly what we wanted... A team to do. Which is go for Attempt. it. Attempt. Yeah. Go and get a bunch of studs at the deadline and they haven't been studs. I know. God. That so, would suck to be a Padres fan. It's got to be brutal. I know there's not a ton of them. But no, they have a, they're they're the San Diego same size market as us. Yeah, and they fucking went for it, and then traded away the farm and said, "This is the window." They traded away the next five years, seven years. Now, would it be a different story if Tatis was out there? I'm sh- of course it would. Difference maker, and that also let's not take out of the account just like just the wind that is removed from your sails. When you're counting on this young stud to come back, the future of the entire organization, and then he gets popped, and you got you don't have him for this year or the first half of next year, right? Eh, it sucks. Sucks. That Dick. that that will hurt your that'll hurt your goddamn feelings. I feel bad for Juan Soto. Yeah, you went from not even coming close to the playoffs to then coming close to the playoffs. A big part of the reason why people are like, you blew it. You blew it. Yeah. I wouldn't say that he's blown it. Uh uh-uh. uh. I mean, I don't know what his numbers are since he's been out in San Diego, but I mean, it's hard. He could be batting 700 and th- they could still be losing games. Talk to fucking Shohei or Mike Trout or any of these guys. Yeah. Here we go. Two teams. Come on. Fuck. When, did, when was the trade deadline? It was July 20. I was in. Because I have it in my. Twenty four. Is July twenty fourth? That sounds right. So let's take a look. Let's go. Let's just say July twenty fourth. Just just for gigs here. Update. Great. Since July twenty fourth, Juan Soto two sixty eight four fifty on base four sixty four slugging. Yeah, he's doing he's doing he's his him. gig. Yeah, he's getting on. Only four dingers in that. Well, not well. Only four. That's a month. But yeah, ain't bad. Not his fault. It's not his fault. But I just yeah, that's so where I'm putting with, my money. You know, I know we made our preseason picks, but just like with the way it's shaking down right now, and people are getting hot and cooling off and wavering, and just like what's your what do your balls tell you right now? Well, like what who who's gonna who's making runs? I can't. 
give me two weeks. Yeah, right. Give me two more weeks, and then I can tell you where my where one of my balls is lit, where it's lit, where it's shifted. Yeah, which you one? know what I mean? Yeah, right. Because it's all about going. It's about the two weeks leading up before and going into the playoffs. And the playoffs this year are different, man. Yeah. First first round buys, which I think could really hurt those teams more than help. Oh, yeah, just an extra 10 days of not playing. Just off. Yeah. Considering you've also been off in the last month, you know? And you're potentially going to be playing a team who is just hot as shit and, and riding the momentum and, you know, yeah. they're, yeah, they're a, a Milwaukee or a, or a Cleveland yeah. or any of these teams. Who could just get rid of, dude, watch out. Yeah, no one wants to play the Braves, obviously. No one wants to, no. I wouldn't want to again as as hot as they got after their after they fumbled out the blocks to start the season. Yeah. Fumbled, stumbled, oy vey. Um I sure as shit wouldn't want to play uh I wouldn't want to play I would want to play Tampa. I wouldn't want to play Seattle right now. No. I would not want to play Toronto right now. I wouldn't want to play Baltimore. They're young and dumb. Yeah. They don't even know that they don't have a chance. Yeah. I don't know? care. Yeah. It's a true major league story. Yes, just stoked to be there. Stoked. Yeah, and it's so nice looking up and seeing that ballpark packed. One of the best one of the best ballparks in the whole league. Team I would not want to play right now, and we'll see if they cool off. Fucking St. Louis. Yeah. I'm t- Fuck that. I wouldn't want to play them in the playoffs. No. I mean, this time last year, they were about to rattle off, like, what, 21 games in a row? Yeah. Now, here's the big question, though. Flaherty. Jack Flaherty. He's going to start here on Labor Day. What? He's coming back on Labor Day? No. Dude, if he comes back and he is healthy and he looks good after three starts... Watch uh, out. Fuck. Yeah. Seriously. The Dodgers starting pitching is is enough to carry them through the rest of the season. Yeah. But if I look at your one, two, three, I'm not scared. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just have this feel. I just have that same feeling that I did in 19 about the Nationals with the fucking Cardinals. Just get hot at the right time. Yeah. If they keep this going, that's my pick for the NL. No shit. Yeah. I like that pick. That's a sexy pick. If they stay hot like this, and I know I know what the Dodgers are doing. I know that sure. team. But the Cardinals offense, if you just take our arms out of it, yeah. on any given day, the Cardinals offense can keep up with L.A. Yeah. And if you put in the Cardinals bullpen yeah. against the Dodgers bullpen, I'm taking the Cardinals. Yeah. I can back. You know what I can do? I can back that up right the fuck now. I can back that up. Here we go. Yeah, Stat, stat master. Dude. Yeah. St. Louis in the National League is behind Dodgers. Is the behind the Dodgers, Braves, Mets, Padres, then the Cardinals. I'm not counting the Padres because of the simple fact that they got rid of Rodgers, who was a rock for him, and brought in Hater. So that's a, that. That to me is out of the question. Yeah, they're similar. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I still just, for some reason... Gut feelings matter in sports. They do. And the Cardinals have just got that tricky little thing about Those them. Those little fucks. It's just a good franchise. Wish it wasn't the case, but it certainly is. There's no doubt about it. None whatsoever. Let's round third and head for home. Fucking the Cardinals. I know. I know. God damn it. <laughs> Fuck. I know. They're always going to be there. Yeah, that really hurts my feelings. Yeah, me too, buddy. It hoids my Wilhelms, buddy. Oh, oh my little Gwamblies. <laughs> my little Gwamblies. <laughs> little Gwamblies. Oh, howdy. <laughs> God. Um, <laughs> where are you? What, where are you venturing off I'm to this somewhere weekend? somewhere Saturday. Yeah. I don't know where yet. I was asked to do it, and I said, sure. Deep rural Ohio. S- deep rural Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, One West Virginia. The, that radius... Yeah. I am performing somewhere, if you made me guess, a winery. Probably. With uh, with uh, Mr. Ricky Glore. So. The winery master, dude. Guess who's hosting for us? 
John Holmes. Boom, baby. I'll be fun. Hit it. That'll be a good, at least a fun road trip, if nothing else. Yeah. I'll be up in Columbus on next Tuesday, the 4th, Dan mm-hmm. Seabree show oh. at the Rambling House. That'll be fun. Yeah. I'll be Bata- in Batavia on this Thursday. My grandfather was the village administrator there, or this was the uh, like the yeah village administrator. Well, damn, tell his ghost to put out some fucking spre- some some street cred. S- sprinkle around, sprinkle a little promo for us. Yeah, you got. If you listen to this podcast, you simply must be following me and Billy personally on Instagram. So you know, we this. round third and head for home because that's what we do. But like, follow us. Yeah, we'll let you know where we come. You know that we'll be there, dude. We come everywhere. We're coming all over the place. Yeah. It's the best name for a tour I've ever seen. With Tom. Tom, Tom Segura. Two, ne- two more Netflix specials. I'm coming everywhere tour. Yeah. <laughs> he signed for two more. Today. Today he signed, he inked for two more Netflix specials. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. There's no telling how much money that guy's made. It's insane. Millions and millions and millions. Good for him. Good on him, man. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, then, what was it, five years ago, he was just hanging out at Go Bananas. Yeah. Fucking wild, dude. What a world. What a world. Could be us. That's why you listen, baby. That's it. That's right. And why else do they listen? Because they want to go to intheclutch.com. Yeah! Use promo code NASTYBOYS for 10% off that order, bitch. S, not a Z. S, not a Z. So, thank you so much for listening. Appreciate it. Feel good about it. Good luck to you all. Good luck to you all. Um, And as always, go Red Legs. And stay nasty.